Hey there, and welcome to A Little Market Insight. I'm your host, Justin Little, and I am absolutely delighted to have you join me for an exciting journey into the captivating world of real estate. Today, I'm on the road with Guest Plumbing and HVAC, where we will learn all about water filtration. We'll also be sitting down with Amy Hanna from Escarpment Law Group to talk about disclosures and breaches of contract. But first, I'm joined by Katie Morrison from RBC. We're going to discuss new build mortgages and new construction loans. Katie, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I know we've done a lot of interviews before. Yes, we starting have. Starting from the small office on a cell phone to now we have Here an we actual are. stage. So thanks for coming along for the ride. Thanks for inviting me. Um, today we have a cool topic because I think a lot of people don't know about it. Um, when you're purchasing new construction versus purchasing resale, there's some different options. And RBC has a really cool program. Can you talk about it, uh, that new construction yeah, program? Yeah, absolutely. So it is different from purchasing resale. Um, when you're purchasing new construction through a builder, typically you're looking at a longer closing. So the closing can range anywhere from 12 months, even up mm -hmm. to four years sometimes, yeah. right? So um, opportunities are great because typically you can get in at a lower price point. There's an advantage for the buyer to wait that long. Um, and you get to design your own home. So without all of the stress of general contracting your own build, you can purchase through the builder, but still be able to customize everything mm -hmm. the way that you want it to be. But with that comes risk. Because the closing date is so far out, we have to protect our buyers against things like market value fluctuation, interest rate changes, and even own their own personal life changes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're buying a house and you're not closing for three to four years, think about all of the things that can happen to someone in their life yeah. within that time period. And so if, you know, you were pre-approved to buy that home and three years later you need to close on that home and all of a sudden your employment has changed or maybe you've had a baby and someone's no longer working, maybe you've purchased a Lamborghini yeah. and, you know, now you have a <laughs> giant car loan. It's the big one, eh? That's right. And you might go back to that lender that you originally got pre-approved with and they may say, you know what, you no longer qualify for this property. But at that point, you've given deposits, usually pretty high deposits mm -hmm. that the builder's been holding on to, and you're obligated to close under the contract. I've seen it so many times where, you know, 90 days out, people are scrambling, they're trying to get financing because they didn't get it in place when they purchased the home originally. Yeah, and so that's one thing. Like you touched on a few things. One is, um, you're right. The new construction route's good because you get to kind of design your own home, which yeah. I know is why, like you know, my wife Cassandra, yes. she loves uh, making her selections. Yeah. So, um, but with the longer closing, like the market can fluctuate over the last however many years, we always saw it going up. Right. But now recently, with the interest rates. Some people, unfortunately, you know, they can't requalify, like you said, because they were probably approved at what, like two and a half percent, two, whatever it was. That's right. Plus the stress test, and then yeah, now it's closing, and the rate's looking close to seven. Exactly. Right. So, what do you guys offer that helps with that? So the other big thing we saw recently was the market value fluctuation. So people that bought at the peak of the market, they mm. may be paid, for example, a million dollars to you know purchase the home through the builder, and then their banks coming out you know three years later where the market's seen a bit of a downturn, that house is only appraising now for eight hundred thousand, mm. and the problem is that that buyer then has to come up with the cash difference to be able to close. Not many people have an extra $200,000 just yeah. sitting in their bank account. <laughs> so they're in a bit of a pickle. Um, but RBC's program protects against that. So we actually, when you purchase the home, you have what's called a cooling off period. And that typically gives them 10 days to get their financing in order, have their lawyer review the contract, and just consider their purchase. Um, so within that period, RBC will actually do the full appraisal on the property. Um, and people ask me all the time, well, how do you appraise something that doesn't exist? And really what we're looking at is we're looking at the contract. Um, we're looking at the design of the home. Mm -hmm. We're comparing it with homes that are already built that are similar in size, similar in um, finishes, you know, lot size, all those sort of things. And we're using that information to do the full appraisal. That means if we appraise that property at what you're purchasing it for, if in three years the value's dropped, we're not going to reappraise it before closing. So the buyer's protected against any kind of market fluctuations. We also cap their interest rate. 
So we can actually hold an interest rate for up to four years. Um, typically it's three years, but on exception, we can go up to four years if we need to. Um, and so that protects the buyer again against a payment shock on closing. Mm. Okay, so if we say, um, you know, we will hold, for example, 6.49 right now, um, and then come closing, rates are 8.49, that buyer is guaranteed to only have 6.49, and they know that's the highest possible payment that they will have on closing. And then what happens if the rates go down? They get the lower rate. They get the, so there's really no losing there it's by going win -win. through it, right? Yeah. And the appraisal is such a, a key thing because it's like you said, um, <clears throat> when these things come time to reappraise 90 days before closing, if the market's shifted yeah. and they're not qualifying, then you're in trouble. You're in right? trouble. And then again with the rate, knowing that, okay, I'm approved at this. Because I remember builders back in 2021, 20, they all ask for some sort of proof that you can get the mortgage, right? right? But that's only relative to that time that with time a lot period. of other lenders, right? Yes. But you with this program, it's a huge, huge asset. It protects the builder and it protects the buyer. Yeah. So the builders really like it as well because they know that if they see an RBC firm approval letter, that client is guaranteed to close and they're not going to end up with some sort of inventory home that they're trying to sell off last minute, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's good for the builder, it's good for the buyer. Um, they also get free insurance. So RBC offers life and disability and critical illness protection on all of our mortgages. It's optional insurance, but we will add that insurance to their mortgage during the construction period. They don't pay for it at all. But what it does is it protects them in case something happens over the course of the build. So husband and wife purchase a home, someone tragically passes away during the construction period, RBC will actually activate the mortgage and then pay out the mortgage in full on closing. Wow, Because they've huge. had that insurance and they haven't even paid yeah. for it. And like we all know, new construction can drag on and on two years, on three years, four years, so that's fantastic. Yeah. And then RBC also has a program for people that actually want to go out there, buy land and build their own yes, home. Yes, we do. So how does that work? So that one's a little bit different, um, you know, and it's usually people that are more experienced in building. Quite often I see, you know, it's people that have maybe built two or three times through a builder and then they decide, you know what, we want more property. So mm. we're going to go out and buy our own land and we're going to hire a general contractor and build our own home. Um, and so we do finance that. It's, it's construction financing. Um, we will finance the land up to 65% of the value. However, if you can buy the land cash outright, it's actually just an easier journey all along. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, we will we will do it. We Again, we appraise upfront based on the contract with the contractor, and we appraise based on completed values. So what do we feel that property will be worth when it's completed? And that's how we determine how much money we can lend that client to build their home. After that, the money's released in phases and, or draws. So they have up to five draws, meaning the bank's going to give them five deposits of, of money to get them through the construction phase. The one thing that I will say is these types of um, projects, you really do need to have some cash mm -hmm. behind you because you're basically funding your build to a certain point and then the bank will come out and assess where you're at and decide how much they're going to pay you back. So you do, again, it's for the, the more experienced builder, someone who's maybe owned a home um, yeah. a couple of times before, has a bit of equity sitting behind them. It's probably, I, I don't see it often for first time home buyers. Probably somebody that's also done a <laughs> renovation, something, right? Something, like, has some sort of Sometimes, you know, knowledge. you get the call from somebody that's, you know, they're living in yeah. a townhouse for two years and they're thinking, oh, I want to buy some land and build. It's like, well, hold on. Exactly. <laughs> you actually need quite a bit of cash. And even to your point, to own the land outright, just what an asset that is. Right. You know, and then talking about the draws, do you know, are the draws set up for specific things to happen or is it flexible? Like, will they only, like, say they get to drywall, then you get another draw? Like, is it set or is that flexible? It's set. It's okay. set. So we have basically a schedule and we will give that to the client so that they're kind of aware of what point they need to be at before they call us for their next draw. So for example, for, you know, the first phase is basically put your dry, your driveway in, foundation, backfill, and then call us. Then you'll get your framing up, your windows and doors and roof, call us. Then there's the interior phases where, you know, we'll, we'll outline all of that mm -hmm. for them so that they know at what point they should contact the bank for their next draw. Beautiful. That's really cool. Yeah. Thanks for all the information, Katie. Yeah, you're I welcome. love having you on. This is always great. It's always a great <laughs> conversation and it's such good, valuable information because it's a lot of things that people don't know about or think about when they're purchasing real estate, right? Yeah, exactly. So thanks again for joining.
Um, up next, we are on location with Guest Plumbing and HVAC, where we're going to talk all about water filtration.